and welcome to Our Town, Fort Collins. My name is Kirk Petty, and today we have fun stories about horses, trolleys, cars, even bikes, all of which have played a big role in Fort Collins history. In this episode, we'll learn how Fort Collins was, and still, is very connected to transportation. Today, of course, we ride in bicycles, cars, buses, sometimes trolleys, but 150 years ago, Fort Collins citizens had fewer options to get around. In this episode, you'll learn about all these amazing changes and understand why our need to move from place to place is still as important today as it was when Fort Collins saw its first automobile in 1902. Let's join Barbara and Martha as they tell us more about transportation in today's episode of Our Town, Fort Collins. So Barbara, the question I have for the kids today is, why did the trains come to Fort Collins? Well, actually there were several reasons, and one of the most important one ones was that they wanted to get produce and livestock to market more quickly. If you did it by horses, um, it took a very long time. So they wanted to move the produce more quickly. Another reason was that Greeley was a significant rival to Fort Collins and Greeley already had a train. Mm -hmm. So we had to have a train. And the third reason was that it would bring people more quickly and more easily to town. And we had some hotels here. The hotels were like the Northern Hotel. The hotels mm -hmm. were very eager to have tourists come. And in fact, they vied for who would be there at the depot the first so they could transport the tourists to their hotels. So kids today when they watch the trains come by they're always freight trains. When did the trains stop carrying people? The trains stopped carrying people after cars became the favored mode of transportation around um, the 1930s thereabouts no more passenger trains came to Fort Collins. And before the trains were here, what kind of transportation did the people have? They walked or they rode horses or they had wagons that were pulled by horses. Okay. What did those early trains look like? They were steam trains. Mm. And it's interesting, if you've ever gone up to, in the mountains, where they have short train trips, Georgetown, for example, they have a steam train there, and you can see the steam coming out the top, and people don't think about what's going on inside. What's going on inside is that there's a fireman in there shoveling coal into that furnace constantly in order to boil the water, which creates the steam, which powers the train. So what influence do you think that the trains had on the growth of our town? Oh, a huge influence. For one, we had the college here, and they brought students to attend the college. They brought residents to live here. They brought tourists, which grew the tourist industry. And for a time, we had about a half a dozen thriving hotels in downtown Fort Collins because they were attracting so many tourists. And I think they just helped people feel that we had a link to the outside world. In 1904, a sugar beet factory was built here. It was approximately on LeMay and, and Vine Drive, more or less. Okay. And the trains allowed immigrants from, first from, they were called Russian Germans mm -hmm. or the Volga people. Mm -hmm. They came because they knew how to raise beets, that's what they'd been doing. So they came to grow beets, and they came by train. Mm -hmm. And then immigrants came from Mexico during the revolution in Mexico, 1915 mm -hmm. to 17. And so by then the German population had become more prosperous, and so the Mexican immigrants began working in the beet fields and they came here by train. And then in 1913, there was a blizzard that shut down the entire state of Colorado. Mm -hmm. 
The trains couldn't go. The trolleys couldn't go. How do you suppose they cleared the tracks? I don't know. I'm just thinking of the ultimate snow day, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was. It was about a snow week. Mm -hmm. They cleared the tracks with horses mm -hmm. because horses, even though they were being considered outdated by that time, mm -hmm. were the only means by which they could get a plow onto the tracks so the mm -hmm. trains could run. So if I was a passenger on one of these old, town, old time trains, where would I have gotten off in Fort Collins? Where were the stops? There was a depot on LaPorte Avenue, which is no longer there because it was kind of in the middle of the street. And so when they widened LaPorte Avenue, they tore it down. And there was a depot on uh, Jefferson, which is now the Rodizio Grill. And then there was a little depot on the campus. And that depot is now at City Park for the trolley. So it wouldn't be Fort Collins transportation if we didn't talk about bicycles. That's absolutely true. And bicycles, the history of bicycles goes way back to the 1500s. Probably a lot of people don't know that. But Leonardo da Vinci, who was a very famous inventor, imagined a bicycle 500 years ago. So we have a bicycle event here in Fort Collins, the Tour de Fat. What do you know about that? I know that people put on costumes, silly costumes, and have a wonderful time riding around Fort Collins on their bicycles. Bicycles were very popular in about the 1880s, but the first bicycles, they were nicknamed penny farthings. The uh, front wheel was about three times as big as the back wheel, and the back wheel was about the size of a tricycle tire and the seat was very high. So some people had to step on something like a porch to get onto the bicycle and then they had to try to manage it. And maneuvering a bicycle like that with a giant front wheel and a little tiny back wheel would be very hard to do. Luckily, they eventually came up out with bicycles that have two wheels that are pretty much the same. They were especially unpopular with men because women liked to ride the bicycles. So they couldn't ride them very easily with their long dresses and they began to wear kind of skirts that had a split in the middle that were called bloomers. And people thought that was very daring of the women to do that, but women loved the bicycles. Susan B. Anthony said that the bicycles were a great step toward the emancipation of women. So when did bicycles truly become more sleek and modern? In the 1970s and 80s, bicycles were much more like they are now. We now have bicycles with tires that have air in them. And in the beginning, the tires were just hard rubber, and that would be pretty uncomfortable to ride on too. So Barbara, when did the trolley first come to Fort Collins? The trolley came in 1906, and it came in the form of these very heavy Wober cars, which were much bigger than the trolley that goes up and down Mountain Avenue in the summertime. And they came from a company called the Denver Interurban Company, which was the only company in Colorado that made the cars. That was part of the modernization of Fort Collins. Mm -hmm. Fort Collins considered itself a progressive community and wanted to have modern things. We already had electricity and indoor plumbing. So the next thing was the trolley car, which was becoming fashionable in other parts of the country. So in the picture behind me, is that the Warbler car? That is a Wobler car, yes. Okay, so it was on the street with the horses and the cars? Yes. Absolutely, and the horses were terrified of it as they were of cars. And how long did we have that trolley? Until 1918, the company went broke in 1918, and so the city decided to buy the lines, because they were already laid out, for $100,000, which was an enormous sum at that time, and the equipment, and then they switched to the smaller Bernie cars, they're called, which is like car 21 that goes up and down in the summertime to City Park. Mm 
Okay, and how did the people feel about the trolley? They loved the trolleys. The trolleys were affectionately called galloping goose, and I rode them when I was a child, and they went up and down like this, so that's why they call them the galloping goose. And it was charming because there was one conductor, when the trolley got to its destination, he would turn around and go to the other end of the car and start it going the other way. So it had a, a steering wheel and so forth at both ends of the car. And then there was a Y on Mountain Avenue, which was quite an entertainment. You watch the three cars. There were three cars all together, and they'd come together in this kind of triangular form formation and move around each other so they could go where they needed to go. So the picture behind me has um, the trolley and the horses and the carriages. Can you tell us about the path of the trolley and what streets the students would recognize that the trolley took? College Avenue, Mountain Avenue, Wedby Street, um, Elizabeth Street, and it didn't go much farther because you have to remember that Fort Collins was very small and compact at that time. In fact, Prospect Road was pretty much the south end of Fort Collins and Laporte Avenue pretty much the north end. And Shields Street was way out of town mm -hmm. and east was Hospital Road, which was pretty much the east end of town. So there weren't too many places where the trolley could go. So why is it that we can only use the trolley in the summertime now? Because all the trolley tracks were taken up. In the 1970s, when interest in preservation of various kinds became more important in Fort Collins, somebody noticed that Car 21 was sitting in Library Park, abandoned, rusting, very sad condition, and began to get the idea that maybe they could restore the trolley car and run it as a tourist attraction. But the track was very expensive, so they couldn't put in the tracks, and they had to have the lines overhead because the trolleys were electric. They had to have the tracks and the line to run the car, so they decided to just run it up and down Mountain Avenue. And that took a long time, and there was in fact opposition to that, which was called the Parkway Preservation Society, and they put up signs in front of houses. They did not want the trolley on Mountain Avenue. So the trolley came back in the 70s. When did it first stop? It, it stopped in 1951, when the people of Fort Collins, much as they loved the trolley, had to give up on it, partly because it was not profitable. The fare was still a nickel from 1919 to 1951, and so they weren't making any money on it. And everybody was in love with cars. After World War II, this was a prosperous country, and people could afford cars. So they thought the trolleys were old-fashioned. You mentioned the cars coming to Fort Collins. Can you tell us about that transformation and how we got to be such a car-dominant society? The first cars were developed around the 1890s to work, actually, as transportation. And they were called horseless carriages because essentially that's what they were. Mm -hmm. They were carriages with some kind of engine to power them and some of them were gasoline engines. Quite a few of them were steamers. If you go up to Estes Park, you can see the Stanley Steamer up there. Mm -hmm. Stanley Steamers at one time were the most popular and fashionable mode of transportation. But the trouble with the steamer car was that you had to start it with, it required some gasoline, and you had to start it with lighting it up and that could be a little hazardous. So Barbara, I want to ask you a question. If I think back to the image of what Fort Collins looked like when we had the trolley, we had horse-drawn carriages, and we had automobiles all on the street at the same time, can you walk us through that history and as the car became more prevalent and the horses 
became less prevalent, what that looked like as far as the streets in Fort Collins? In 1915, the first section of College Avenue was paved and that was part of the triumph of the car. We still had the trolleys and we were to have them for several more decades and people were still saying to people who own cars, get a horse, because there were still many, many people who used horses for transportation. And gradually, as the car became more available, at first it was a rich man's toy, that's what it was called, because the first cars cost around six to $800. You put that in modern, terms, that would be several thousands mm -hmm. of dollars, and the poor working man couldn't afford that. But then Henry Ford developed the Model T, and he wanted every man to own a car, he said man, mm -hmm. although there were many women drivers in mm -hmm. those days. And he said he had developed the assembly line. Mm -hmm. way of manufacturing cars and he said you can have any color you want as long as it's black. Mm -hmm. So that made it cheap and, and reasonable to afford a car. Mm -hmm. And when cars became more affordable, more people <laughs> bought them. So gradually the car took over and by 1920 most roads were paved and the car had clearly triumphed. However, horses were still being used on farms because Tractors, which had been invented by around 1916 or so, weren't within the means of most farmers mm -hmm. who were just barely eking out a living. It wasn't until maybe after World War II that the horse was completely obsolete as a working animal around here. I think it's wonderful what you shared with us today. I can imagine how an immigrant would come here by train, enjoy the benefits of the trolley, and be prosperous enough to own a car. I think that's fantastic. So I have one other question for you. Mm -hmm. um, Eight-year-olds today tend to see one other thing on the streets all the time in Fort Collins, the large buses. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how those tie into the history of the train and how they use their space now? As the population of Fort Collins grew, bus transportation became more widespread and the buses kind of grew by increments until mm -hmm. they got to be the big buses they are now. So transportation, as you can see, has really evolved over the years in Fort Collins. In the 1930s, when passengers were still coming to Fort Collins by train, the men who worked on the, at the railroad at the station there on Mason Street found a stray dog who was expecting puppies. And so they adopted her. This was around 1932 at the depths of the depression. But they adopted her. They found homes for her puppies and they had her spayed so she wouldn't have any more puppies. And from then on, she belonged to the depot. And every time a passenger came, tra train came, Annie would be there to greet the passengers. And that's one of the favorite stories of kids in Fort Collins. And can you tell us where Annie's statue is now? Annie's statue is in front of the main library on Peterson Street. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Wow, we've come a long way since trolleys crisscrossed the streets in downtown Fort Collins. Now we have only one left, the famous Bernie car that offers rides each summer down Mountain Avenue. I also love riding the new Max system, too knowing it helps all of us get around even better in our ever-growing city. Like Martha, my favorite story is also about Annie the Railroad Dog and how she was adopted by the railroad men, greeting passengers as they arrived in the expanding town of Fort Collins. Well, that's it for today's episode about transportation. I'm Kirk Petty, and thanks for watching Our Town, Fort Collins. <laughs>